Hi guys! Yes, it is actually true. I am outside in the sunshine. It's awesome. Today is Thursday, March 12th and I'm outside in the sunshine. It's a bit breezy. The wind is in my hair, as you can see. And um, I'm actually feeling a bit tired still, but much better than uh, in the past couple of weeks. So, there have been a couple of things on my mind, and so I decided to uh, basically just come out and talk about these things. This is going to be an energy work video, basically. Um, I got um, an update from Jennifer Pearson about her energy work, how that was going, and that actually sort of, you know, got me thinking again about a couple of aspects that really are sort of unavoidable if you're into this type of stuff and um, always I think it's important to remember we are to the if we're doing this type of meditation so a meditation that is really an energy work as as well um, Remember that we are part of a lineage of, of people. We are not the first to experience these things, right? We are not the first to... It's not like it's... Um, even though each one of us experiences the things in his or her own way, it isn't about... Uh, like th there is no common denominator there that would that there would not be um, It isn't like that. It's the same basically for all of us and there are a lot of approaches as To how you could deal with you know the difference different levels of consciousness basically just to put in a really tiny nutshell, you know so um one of the ways people approach different levels of consciousness is through mysticism, for example. Um, basically, all of mysticism in culture, wherever you go, even, I think, uh, in shamanic uh, cultures, there are elements or there are approaches and... Um, styles of talking about things that are basically what I would say are mystical. Mystical is just one word. It means that you are basically mystified, you know, just to put it really simply. It's um, you are becoming aware of a world or a way of being, which is the same thing really, that is beyond what you basically know or are comfortable with so that's important it's it's part of the process it means you're doing it right that's absolutely crucial whenever these things happen or whenever some things happen that are kind of like oh my god what why how how can i deal with this you know it's basically um that's it means you're have you have progressed. You've made a significant leap into encountering basically what I think is a part of yourself because it was there the whole time, and now you're coming in contact with this and you're aware of it, which you didn't used to be. So that's a big deal. It's a, it's a very much a big deal, and mysticism. So coming back to that would be a way of, um, I suppose, allowing emotion and mind to give a shape to your experience. There's the experience and then there is like a translation into the mind, into the culture even, if it's more than one person. In, For example, in terms of uh, Christian mysticism, certainly, um, it's one way of going about things. It can have immense value. 
However, the risk, what I've always felt personally to be rather important, is the risk of taking a mystical uh, description of any sort at face value when a reader of that or an observer or an, you know, a consumer even of, for example, mystical art looks at those things and hasn't had the experience themselves, then you get like a sort of a, a derivative situation. <laughs> a de derived situation. It's, you get like a, and often in mystical texts, that's supposed to happen. You're supposed to inspire the public, whoever they are, you know, or the congregation or whatever it is, to gain some sort of experience of themselves. And it's all supposed to be sort of organized <laughs> and streamlined, preferably by a priest, you know. And none of that is really working anymore in these days. 2020, it's not, nobody, th there are very many people, let me put it this way, who don't feel comfortable um, sort of giving away their sovereignty even in this respect to another human being who basically quite often is in a derived experience themselves if only a priest had a direct line a real direct line and often that isn't the case you know so what you get is a derived situation from a derived situation from a, and there aren't really enough um, so I've never had any truck with any of this myself. It's, I may sound quite cynical or quite um, uh, abrupt about these things. I think it's rather important. It's one of the things that are sort of fundamental to my life. It's also how I was brought up. Basically, I was brought up to think about these things and not to take anything for granted ever, you know. So it's a bit, it's been a huge challenge. And so it's not, I, I'm not, I'm not ever going to say that any of this is easy. I'm going to say it is possible to communicate with with higher levels of consciousness that are basically your own, you know, without falling to pieces, without, um, it depends what you want. As with all types of energy, in basic, basically it's about figuring out how it works for you right how you do this i'm not going to tell you that because i can't i don't know who you are i can look at astrology i can look at charts i can sort of go like okay so if this person has got mercury in gemini or mercury in aries or mercury in any one of those the experience and the process is going to be different your Mercury position, if you recognize yourself in that, it may provide a bit of help. Because there's a difference between the signs and the positions and the work it does, the way that works out, is really different. And um, I've even I've been sort, of, sort of evaluated my own Mercury position, which is on the edge, just in Leo, on the just out of cancer just in leo and i'm always a bit kind of insecure about the so-called critical degrees in astrology where the, uh, the 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 planet or whatever it is you're looking at is actually on the edge between two signs like that it's kind of fuzzy to me anyway more can be said about that but uh i think certainly that the way i go about things is i tend to be uh kind of passive I tend to wait for quite a long while until I get more information about things and I choose really slowly and actually that's been really beneficial in my life for me to slowly, you know, eat, take it easy, take it one step at a time. I'm in no hurry, you know, none of this is in any hurry at all ever. And I am, I think I'm good at gratitude basically i feel really grateful for 
every, every opportunity I get, I tend to look at things in a really positive manner often. And I think, um, to some extent, I learned some of that from my parents who were, who had Mercury and Aries, both of them. And there's a, there was a huge gap. They were a lot more, they were very, very strongly proactive in their opinions and their decisions about things. And I've always felt very much at odds with that. So, you know, so I, I'm just trying to give you a couple of examples here of how you mentally um, place experiences and in how much of a hurry are you. My baseline, basically what I'm trying to get at here through this whole story is that what we need in order to progress in our energy work endeavors, whatever they are, is an open mind. And basically what uh, allows us to make progress easiest, I feel, now is asking questions. So whenever you feel like, oh my god, what what is this big thing? You know, what's the what's this huge I am seeing Archangel Michael now. Wow, I'm blown away. I'm, you know, my, I'm sort of almost fragmenting here in, uh, in how impressive this is. Huge, massive energy impact happening on me and I don't know what to do with it. Recollect yourself, put yourself, you know, you're not supposed to fragment. You're supposed to pull yourself together. But you have to do it. Nobody else is going to have the same power as you yourself in reintegrating whatever process that is that is happening. It's happening to you for a reason. It's happening to you in this manner for a reason which only you can get at, which only you can eventually describe even for us were you to be able to, you know, get that far. It d depends how... <laughs> I think that we are all quite a bit more complicated. We've got quite a bit more... We've got... Uh, we are really, all of us, really talented for this type of stuff. Only nobody ever told us that. The society around us tells us that we basically suck, you know and everything, everybody's got these huge infer inferiority things going on, everybody's always constantly doubting themselves, I'm not pretty enough, I'm not slim enough, I'm not nah, 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 nah. endlessly, I don't work hard enough, I work too hard, both at the same time, possibly. <laughs> None of it makes any sense, does it? So, we haven't learned to sort of basically say, okay, so, okay, so there's all this called social construct, it's all that blah, it's all there, I can still, you know, sort of feel doubtful about that. Look at me with my silly second-hand pullover that I wear all the time. Look at me with my weird beards and things. And Okay, so I'm weird. So, yeah, that's true. I'm actually, you know, really weird. <laughs> it's, uh, that's the social construct level of things, right? Right there. Behind that and underneath that and to the left and the right of that, there's all this life going on. And it was there the whole time. And I think that basically what social constructs do is sort of crystallize any type of, you know, emotion into a fixed crystal structure for a while, which gives us a sense of, okay, it's uncomfortable, at least it's predictable. Oh, you know, hallelujah. At least I've got something that I can consider solid in all this great big huge energy fluidity that's going on the whole time and all this flowing of which is what's supposed to be happening so we're yeah so I've worked in the past winter I've worked with uh, Tree of Life the Kabbalah Tree of Life quite a bit coming back to it again and again basically because I found on the internet a um, what was it a representation, I suppose, of the seven um, 
what is it, 10, really, 7 at the bottom and 3 at the top, uh, Sephiroth, you know, of the Kabbalah Tree of Life, with, in each uh, kernel, a uh, planetary sign. So, that particular representation of things was actually really helpful to me, because I'm used to the planets and the way they work, uh, through astrology. I've, I've worked with that quite a bit. So it's transferring one type of knowledge into another, into a particular kind of approach, which helped me to see like the constant dichotomy in the world and in my life, certainly, between uh, basically structure on the one hand and kindness on the other. If you just, if you only had two Sephiroth, those would be them, you know? That would be enough, basically. Structure is what tells me, okay, so you are different from me. Kindness tells me, yeah, but I still like you. <laughs> or maybe not, you know. Maybe you don't like me, which is fine as well. So, but there's the emotional side to the thing, and there's the rational side. Basically, it's one other way of putting it. It's not exactly that, but it doesn't matter. And that's what I'm basically also trying to convey with my... Uh, my approach here is asking questions is something that will get you through a lot of things. Asking, uh, what do you want to know, basically? The universe, with all its fluidity and all its energies, is there for us to partake in. We have to engage. How do you engage? Which is one way of one super way of engaging, I think, is asking questions. So I noticed, I use tarot for that all the time. And I even used, I got into the Kabbalah because I found the Kabbalah tarot, which is a, a Spanish uh, edition of a, like a combination of a Marseille deck with, a, it's on my channel if you want to have a look at that, um, with Kabbalah tree on, you know, positions and directions and channels and things associated with each tarot card specifically. And each time, um, I, I, each time I pulled a few cards, I got this answer, like I am way on the structure side of things. I'm way, um, kind of overdoing it on the combative, investigative, investigational I don't know what the word is here um, investig investigative what's the word you know inquiring constantly and I'm not into the relating as as I should as much as I should be because that's part of me as well it is a part of me but it's something that I've you know kept hidden for such a long time uh, because I didn't have the context and didn't have the, the tools and there were a lot of things that I never learned and actually uh, it's just that's just my path right so my being on YouTube is a massive massive personal uh, expansion effect for me because I get to finally transform all the investigation bits and all the queries and all the gotta make myself, you know, work along particular lines. All my ambition, basically, transforming that into something a bit more human, into something a bit more, um, where actually my channel shows the lines I've been working on. There's a process there. I'm actually enjoying that. The, the fact that there's all these you know, all sorts of different kinds of activities and things and it becomes it becomes a it's like having a life really <laughs> rather than constantly struggling which is what used to be how it went certainly before I had my soul retrieval experience now maybe it's because I had that soul retrieval experience that I actually find it fairly easy to just go and ask questions to just go and okay so I've had these really weird I've had such really weird experiences and I'm completely fine with that it 
it takes time. Maybe that's the other half of the other than, you know, ask questions, find for yourself what do you want to know. Which you can ask them, them, you know, or it, anything. And another thing into if in energy work that I think is really crucial is God, I'm hoping this is going to make sense to anybody is that all energy, whether it is white light energy or lava energy or uh, Archangel Michael energy, whatever it is, you know, it is um, it one way of getting information about how it works or getting a relationship with it is asking it to do something for you so getting it to work getting it to become involved in a part of your life in, or in some part of your life at some level and then watching and observing what it is that's happening because there are these massive energies. There's one example of a massive energy that I've encountered at some point. Sorry, gotta, gotta go like this for a bit. One example of a massive energy that I encountered is I, at one point, more or less accidentally, which is what kind of tends to happen to me, um, experienced in here, I think it was a third eye kind of, a, kind of an experience, coming into contact with the heart of the galaxy. <laughs> it was gorgeous. It's such a beautiful vibration. I just wish I could communicate that to you guys. Maybe I will one day. I don't know. It's just, I've never gotten around to any of that. But it was gorgeous. It happened uh, rather, actually rather simply, which is basically also what tends to happen. I... Um, was working so it's maybe even you know 10 years ago or so way before soul retrieval or any of it uh, it was towards like halfway into December somewhere it was a yep, bright beautiful day just like today uh, Sun was lower in the sky of course but it was quite sunny I realized that the Sun at the position it was in was actually aligning with the heart of the galaxy and I was standing outside my van I was working and I was standing outside taking a little break I think and I was looking at the Sun like that and I was sort of imagining basically that this heart of the galaxy is behind the Sun right there that is actually there and I could feel all sorts of interesting beautiful cosmic vibrations happening I could sort of it was like all sorts of little elements inside me went like yay 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 party 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 you know because it just feels really good and since then I think I've heard a few people talk about um did I or am I just making this up I don't think I've really um I know that there are people that's let me, let me put it this way um who consider the heart of the galaxy to be an important point in astrology, in astrological charts, certainly. Um, other than that, there are people talking about uh, the central sun and things like that. Yeah, maybe, or the galactic sun, those types of things. And immediately you're going into, you know, it's not necessarily the experience anymore, it's derived. You go into the Ascended Masters country, which is another whole different tale of yarn. Oh dear. We just tend to talk to each other about things. <laughs> and make up, you know, make up or sort of come up with... Because people don't... You, you don't normally... You yourself don't normally have a way of checking whether there's any point to what the way it's presented to you and it's the vibration is presented to you in this form or in that form and we are reacting to the form where it's appealing to us to think of uh, the violet flame or the galactic sun or any of it 
Archangel Michael. And none of it really is experiential. So, or often that is the case. It's fine if you want to work on that level, if that is sort of the, if that's the thing you are working with and you're happy with that and your life is okay with that, then I'm not saying it should be otherwise. Not ever. Please, you know, don't think that I am telling you that what you're doing is not enough in any way. Because that's not true. Your own life will tell you at some point, whoever is watching this, you know, whether you should do something else about this. Your life will tell you, not me, not anybody else. No, I am not a priestess. I am investigating these matters and I'm sharing my investigations, my questions, my, um, my experience of the things. So everything you hear here is also derived in a way because the only thing that you can really talk about is what you experience yourself so which should be completely obvious and yeah so so um i think we are li we live in a mystical world basically if that's what you want to if that's what you want to see if that's the vibration that is comfortable or healing to you then yeah you can certainly feel that I'm sitting here in the sun, in the sunlight. I've sat here for quite a while and I've absorbed quite a bit of solar energy, which is amazing because it makes me happy, you know. I just feel, I tend to personally always um, go into some kind of a color uh, experience. Everything in my, um, I become aware of all sorts of gorgeous reds and pinks and greens and yellows it's not an aura experience it's just an impression of how it makes me feel to be out in the sun that's what my body is telling me I'm happy so here pink and orange and bloop 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 like that I'm a hippie and I'm I'm also quite trippy by myself I'm a trippy person not everybody is a tripper <laughs> you know and I I could go into in or extraordinary lengths asking what the red means and the orange means and the, what the colors mean or try to paint them and which is also something that I, I might eventually do at some point or other basically long story short you're allowed to ask questions to ask of the energy can you please simmer down slightly because I want to be able to see you and the way you're doing it now I'm just being blown away can you just can you go sit over here and just be quiet for 10 minutes so I can look at you try try see what happens engage and then develop your relationship with the things they are not out after you to make you fragment or disintegrate again. That is not the point. But the only point, the only person who can reintegrate us is us. Okay? So that's basically my lesson for today. <laughs> um, I will be back after the weekend. Okay? Thank you so much for watching to me and listening to me. Uh, you know, I'm just hoping it makes any kind of sense out there. And uh, I thought it made sense. I th I'm thinking it makes rather quite a bit of sense. You know, ask questions. And you're allowed. <laughs> you're, nowadays, you're allowed. A hundred years ago, it would have been a different matter, which is very scary to think of. Thank you so much for watching, you guys. See you next time. Bye-bye then.